BBC Scotland correspondent. Let's talk to Katie Montgomery, who's a trans activist and herself a trans woman. Katie, the now I, um, I understand you're in England, is that right, or are you? Is that, yeah. Okay. That's right. right. So so. We'll get on in a moment to the, uh, the, the the exhaustion that people must feel about this argument going round and round. Absolutely. But I suppose the government in Westminster's got a point if they start to think people might be, uh, you know, an individual person might be a woman in Scotland and a man in England. Um. Well, I think people are confused about what this bill actually does because, I mean, lots of the discussion is about single-sex spaces or, you know, as, as the previous person was saying, you know, all these things like equal pay and stuff. But what this actually does is it affects your birth, birth certificate. And basically any time you've ever used your birth certificate in your life, which isn't many times, uh, it's for things like marriage certificates, death certificates, and for taxes um, and pension. And so you could potentially say, oh, well, you know, maybe Scotland considers me a woman and England considers me a man for the purposes of getting married or dying. Um, but I don't see why anyone would want to, you know, do that fraudulently. It doesn't benefit them in any way. Something that, you know, the discussion around single sex spaces, that's affected by things like passport and driving license, you know, your actual ID that you use every day. And those are already self ID. You don't already already you don't need a diagnosis of gender dysphoria to change those documents and that's been the case for years and years and years so but, but then why, I, why I just would you important why would you support the scottish law if it changes so little well because so i recently got my gender recognition certificate i transitioned years and years and years ago but i only just got my gender recognition certificate last year um i changed my passport years and years ago and, and everything else so I just had this one document that was out of line with everything else. And I had like three main reasons to change it. One was if I ever want to get married in the future, but that's obviously a long way off. And another was about my own death plans. But I kind of changed my view on that, although I'm only in my 30s. I had a trans friend who died a few years ago uh, in a mysterious circumstance, kind of tragically, and it was really horrible. And there was an inquest into her death. And because she didn't have a gender recognition certificate, despite transitioning years and years before, you know, she was at the same stage as me, kind of like post-transition. Mm. Um, for the whole inquest, they had to refer to her as a man and her like birth name. And it was so stressful for her partner that her partner ended up taking their own life, which was extra tragic and very difficult for us. And I just thought, I don't want to put my family through that if, you know, if I was to die tragically young. And finally, the last thing that I was concerned about was looking at all of these attacks on trans rights across the UK, especially from the uh, English Conservative government, was how how bad is this going to get? You know, is it going to get worse and worse? And if it does, and if it gets to the point where I might want to move, you know, to Ireland or Netherlands or somewhere to escape, how bad it gets? And this is a real concern. I, I'm not being hyperbolic here. This is shared by many of my trans friends. If we needed to leave the country, I'd want all my documents in order because whatever country I moved to might want to see my birth certificate if I applied for citizenship. So, yeah, but now, but surely the problem will be if you're in England and you have changed gender on your birth certificate in Scotland, and let's say you move to the Netherlands, they um, they've now got two a choice about whether you're male or female. Well, I mean, they would see what document you, they ask for and they would ask for your birth certificate and your passport. And, you know, I, I'm sure it depends on which country and I'm not an expert in Dutch law. But um, if, you know, if they ask for your birth certificate and you have an updated birth certificate, then that's what you would give them. OK, I understand. Uh, I suppose where it gets difficult is when we get these outlying cases. And forgive me, I'll give you an example because it caused a, yeah. um, a big argument last month, which is when the Scottish Prison Service sent a trans woman paedophile to an all-female jail. So this person had offended inside a man's body. And around 60 protesters gathered outside Cornton Vale Prison to demonstrate a against the, the transfer of this person, Katie Dolotovsky, to the prison near Stirling. Now, right. that that's where the you see how vivid the concerns on the other side get. Yeah, I know that there are, um, you know, in, in the terms of the general topic of transgender rights, there can be uh, difficult points to discuss. However, when it comes to the Gender Recognition Act and getting a gender recognition certificate, this case isn't relevant because having a gender recognition certificate doesn't determine which uh, prison you're housed in. You can 
be in a women's prison as a trans woman without a gender recognition certificate, and you can be in a man's prison even with one. Well, then uh, why, why so- Katie, it must exhaust you that we... I, I see this on social media, and you will too. The the arguments yeah. about it are, are just scalding, and it must be exhausting for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is incredibly And I speak as somebody who's uh, not directly involved. You're directly involved in this. Yeah, I mean, the, the amount of abuse I get, you know, 24-7 um, threats to my life and all kinds of things over, you know, fighting for a relatively minor legislative change and now it's got to the point where the governments effectively use their like nuclear option mm. to who knows where this is going to go possibly to the union breaking up over you know something so minor and and the the rage people have and i think the rage is, is I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you, you carry on sorry let me interrupt oh no okay. yeah i was i was just going to say that i you know the rage is so misdirected because i've found in my own life i i meet people who I've never met a trans person before. They don't know what a trans person is. They have worries. And I think it's it's fair to worry about things you don't know about. And then once I've talked to them for, you know, half an hour or something at the pub or a club or whatever I've met them at, then they're just like, oh, it's just normal. The, and, I, I suppose... I was going to say the, yeah, the, the, so well, yeah, the politic the politics doesn't help. But uh, sorry, forgive me for interrupting. Yeah. There's a slight delay on the line. That's okay. I, I was going to say that the fundamentally what what sets off people on the other side from you seems to be this that that some people will never ever change their mind about what being a woman is, and they say if you're a woman, it, you're born in a woman's body, and if you're not bo- born in a woman's body, you're not a woman, and that's it. And there isn't the, there's no second stage to that argument yeah i think that um we can have this kind of philosophical debate about what a true woman is and where the souls exist and all this other kind of stuff but in reality all i care about is whether people you know i want to create human rights for people and the point of human rights is to combat oppression and difficulties in their life so they have a fair chance at life and we can like one major force in human rights discussions is misogyny, which affects all women and it holds them back in life, in their jobs and and, and every, you know, every single aspect of a woman's life is affected in some way by misogyny, at least at some point. And the reality is whether you believe trans women are women, men or something else, we still face systematic misogyny. We still, you know, get the harassment on the street, we still get the threats on social media, all of these things. And so the law should protect us from that. Unfortunately, already, the Equality Act 2010 already protects trans women from misogyny, even if they don't have a gender recognition certificate, which is why this kind of comment by the Rishi Sunak government is just kind of nonsense, because the Gender Recognition Act isn't going to affect that. Thank you very much indeed, Katie, for speaking to us.